Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Tim Holscher. Thank you for joining me again today. I've been looking for the last few days at some statements that the Apostle Paul makes about our being in Christ. We started in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, in which he tells us that we are those who are raised with Christ, and we're raised with Christ because we've died with Christ. And he gives us a very practical application. We can take those things we find out, we've been looking at some of them, and we can set them as the frame of our mind through which we filter the details of life. We then looked in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, at the fact that we have these things because God says about them. They're called blessings, good things he says about us in Christ. And we saw that a couple more of those blessings are, is that we are also holy and without blame. And then we saw yesterday in verse 6 that all of that is because he has graced us in the beloved. And if we, we pointed this out yesterday, the ESV, while they have the word blessed, that's actually the verb graced. It's a verb form of the word grace. Today I want to look here in verse 7 where it tells us, begins that in him, talking about being in Christ, we have redemption. There are four, perhaps five words in the New Testament that have some idea of redemption or acquiring or purchasing something. This particular word is built off of a, a term, a, a word lutron that meant to pay a ransom or pay a price that secured the release of another, a release of one being held for whatever reason, in this case, being held as a penalty for uh, trespasses, a penalty for sins. And he says that redemption is through his blood. It's actually by the, the real death of Christ in which he suffered a violent death, hence the, the real concept of shedding his blood here, a violent death in our place, which again reminds us, it's not that I was worthy to, to be saved. It's not that God saved me because he wanted to have me in his family because, oh, lucky me, I get to have Tim with me. I'm going to do everything to get Tim uh, in my family. It's not really that. It's the fact that I was a sinner and... I was one that had offended God, and yet he, in his love, would come down here and become a man so that he could die on a cross, we're talking about the Son now, and shed his blood, suffer the violent penalty I deserved for my actions. And this is a good reminder of that. But he's freed me from that penalty. I don't have to suffer that penalty. I, I'm free of that penalty now because of what he's done. And that's what this term redemption is referring to. And then he goes on, he says, that's the forgiveness in this context, the forgiveness of trespasses. Most Christians learn very early on in our Christian life that God has forgiven us. When we believe the gospel, when we believe Christ died for our sins, that he was buried and he rose again, we know that he's forgiven us. And in this context, he says he's forgiven us our trespasses, not the word sin. And I think that that's important that he chooses to use this word trespass. Uh, the importance of this term trespass is it's, it, a sin is always an action, whereas a trespass is, can include an attitude. It can be a, a way that we think about something, and oftentimes a trespass expresses something we justify in our minds. We know God said this, but we're going, but I think God should be okay with this too. I can choose this. I know it's not what God wanted, but it should be okay. And we justify what we're doing. Uh, maybe another study, another day, I can look at some examples of trespass and you can see this. But in the context of Ephesians, where you have believers, Christians, believers that have a bad attitude towards each other, this problem of a trespass is very, very uh, important because some of them, they may not actually be sinning, but they are maintaining a bad attitude. Now, if you maintain a bad attitude towards somebody else long enough, there's a good chance you will sin. But trust, we, we trespass way more than we ever sin against God because oftentimes we choose to harbor and think and maintain certain act, activities. And God isn't, isn't really what God, where God wants us to be. And then he comes down the last place and he says that this redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of our trespasses, all of this is according to, notice this, the riches of his grace. That idea of the riches of his grace is that God extends to us the wealth of this grace, providing for us that which we do not deserve. And he doesn't do it a little bit saying, I'm giving you a little bit of grace. Now you better make sure it goes a long ways because this is it. This is your, this is your opportunity. You blow it, you're out. No, it's, he's so rich and generous with this grace and extending this to us. I can't, I can't outspend 
God's generous generosity to me in grace. It's very rich, very generous. Uh, that goes a long way in helping us dispel a lot of issues that sometimes we as Christians have with ourselves and God to realize just how generous he has been with us. We have redemption in Christ through means of his blood so that our trespasses, those, those decisions we make that are not really what God wants us to be thinking about or doing, those are sent away. And all of that is because God has been very rich to us with his grace. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I trust that this is encouraging. Another good thing to put up there in that framework and filter some of the crazy stuff going on around us in this world. And uh, I trust you have a good day in Christ, in the Lord.